Reviews. 65 I like dinosaurs and I like sci-fi movies so I was looking forward to this. I also like it when a movie can be made with a minimal cast. Unfortunately this just doesn't work for me. Limited cast yes but they speak different languages so there's little actual conversation which means the movie has to make up for that in other ways and it just doesn't. A spaceship that's able to put passengers into cryosleep but has effectively no long-range sensors to detect an asteroid belt. Yet the character has a handheld device that can detect something in space while he's on the ground. There's a lot of that kind of nonsense. I spent so much of this movie just rolling my eyes I'm surprised I'm not looking out the back of my own head. The CGI is good. That's about the only real positive about it. Not a good movie so. Dismissed. I'm the exact target audience for this movie. I'm a sci-fi junkie. I love thrillers, Adam Driver is awesome, and I'll watch basically anything with large scary creatures. This should have been a layup for me to like. Yet I found myself unengaged and somewhat bored. I started feeling sleepy even after a Red Bull. I don't really know how or why it happened, but this is just a forgettable movie. Some dumb things happen but I am able to turn my brain off. Although after watching the Angry Joe's review, I didn't realize how many dumb things I ignored. I guess I just didn't care enough to notice them. I hope a movie like this doesn't discourage studios from going for more of these mid-budget movies. I like the idea of an isolated story somewhere random in space-time. I just hope they do a better job next time. One viewing, opening Sunday March 12, 2023. I really think this film would be doing much better at the box office with a better title and clearer marketing. This is a more than serviceable action thriller starring a legitimate star that is mostly entertaining for its 90-minute runtime. The CGI is surprisingly good given the small budget and it's cool seeing dinos in a non-Jurassic Park film. The story is probably the weakest element given its cliched beats and real Last of Us vibe. Some wooden dialogue and lack of exposition round out my critiques. I like the futuristic tech in the film and Driver delivers an expected solid showing. 65 won't light the genre on fire, but it's better than it's getting credit for. Is this a perfect movie? Not in the slightest. Does it deserve a 5.710? Absolutely not. It does enough to entertain, and has enough of an emotional backbone to strike some feelings. I really love the dynamic between Adam Driver's character and the little girl. He sees her as his daughter from home, and that is his drive to get home. No pun intended. But honestly, it was really well done. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the CGI was better than most recent Marvel projects, that might not be the hardest to achieve, but there's that. The dinosaurs were very well realized, and gave the movie a sort of Jurassic Park feel. Some parts are very intense. There were still some minor problems as a whole though. There were some cliché parts that made me kind of scratch my head, and some other annoying plot conveniences. Overall, a solid movie worth a watch. 8.510. A cry of joy that the titles had started to roll. That the end had finally arrived, although with such poor editing throughout you can't be fully confident that the end is the end. But checking the elapsed time, and knowing that these days the credits can often run for at least 10 minutes or more, I knew that the torture was over, that I could refrain from saying and thinking WTF more times than any recent film I can remember, while musing on why such a talented two-dimensional actor like Adam Driver would undertake a role like this in a film that is so poorly scripted, so dismally directed, containing two cardboard characters so full of chore. This is not a good piece of filmmaking but, as many observers often suggest, it could have been so much more. It's a time before mankind. Humanoids have been exploring the universe. Mills, Adam Driver, leaves behind his family to pilot a spaceship. He encounters an asteroid field and crash lands on a planet with dinosaurs. He finds the other survivor, a girl named Koa, Ariana Greenblatt. This is Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs and it's boring. The movie has a big final reveal which is never a revelation in the first place. These are not supposed to be humans and yet they look exactly like humans. They could at least make the ears pointy or maybe lose the opening text. Maybe they're trying for a Planet of the Apes reveal which most people didn't get and the studio added the opening text to clarify the story. 
the main character is supposed to be a trained hyperspace pilot with multiple missions under his belt, but he leaves the girl alone immediately after finding her so she can wander off by herself when she wakes up. He runs around like Yosemite Sam blasting his guns in the air, constantly dropping his rifle and then scurrying away unarmed, only to realize for the tenth time in a row that he may in fact need that rifle. He trips over every rock in his path, and thinks a dried twig can support his entire body weight. He has to constantly be saved from his own stupidity by a seven-year-old. And now they fly off into space to do what? Run out of fuel and then slowly starve to death. It would have been more fitting if they both had died with the dinosaurs, and then have some archaeologists dig up their ship and fossilized corpses 65 million years later. The good. Awesome recreation of a wild dangerous world full of dinosaurs and threads of death and struggle for survival. The suspense and fear is better than Jurassic Park. Really cool sci-fi tech featured, really awesome play on someone, driver, struggling to survive a primitive world while also having highly advanced technology, but still facing challenges top-notch cinematography, lighting, and CGI makes you feel very immersed into the world and situations. The bad. The plot is extremely basic and predictable. Man faces a few obstacles that he overcomes, most of them the same situation, that's about it. There's only two characters basically, and the dialogue between them is limited. This works for a bit, but there's not enough development of the characters, and it's easy to just not care about what happens to them one way or another. It could have been much better if there were more objectives in the plot, more characters are built up, more on what happened before and after the situation on the planet. 65 2023 is a movie that my wife and I saw in theaters this evening. The storyline follows a pilot on a research voyage whose ship runs into an unforeseen asteroid belt and crashes on Earth 65 million years ago. Most of the crew doesn't survive the crash except one little girl who doesn't speak English. The pilot and the little girl try to make it across the planet to a rescue pod that can hopefully get them home. This movie is co-written and co-directed by Scott Beck and Brian Woods, who also worked together in Haunt, and stars Adam Driver, House of Gucci, Ariana Greenblatt, Love and Monsters, Chloe Coleman, My Spy, and Nika King, Euphoria. There's a lot to like about this movie but there's also something missing. The storyline had a ton of potential but needed more details of the backstory on a macro scale rather than just the characters' subplots which were good. I think we needed more details on the reason for the voyage and who the pilot worked for. I will say the storyline does keep you interested from beginning to end, it just could have been better. The acting and chemistry of Driver and Greenblatt was perfect. The special effects are outstanding and as good as any Jurassic Park movies. The dinosaurs and insects were a 10 out of 10, though they could have worked in a few passive dinosaurs, a herbivore or two. Every creature in this movie is a bloodthirsty killer. The action scenes are intense and there's some great jump scares throughout the film. The settings and cinematography was very good, the CGI was outstanding and the wounds are gory and intense. The ending is predictable but still entertaining. Overall, this is a worthwhile addition to the science fiction, action genre in a pitch black kind of way. I would score this a 6.5-10 and recommend seeing it once. A few opening minutes of backstory and then off to the races without giving the audience any idea why or where he is going, okay fine. Then the paltry asteroid shower disabled the spaceship without any collision avoidance systems. Hum, starting to lose me already within the first few minutes. Then the crash, on Earth millions of years ago and the only other survivor is a 8-yo girl who doesn't speak your language. Um what? There are loads upon loads of fancy gadgets, battery guns, spaceships and not one person thought to bring an iPhone with a translator. Come on writers. What is she doing on this mission anyways with her parents? How was she supposed to communicate with everyone once she arrived? Perhaps some other survivors would have brought this movie more life, and dialogue. I'm guessing the writers didn't want to get too intricate and just wanted to show off the poor $45 million Seagi movie. The story is crap. There is just grunting and pointing with repetition for all the talking and it gets annoying fast. The action is okay but boring and I just ended up quitting about halfway through. The actual screenplay is probably 20 pages long, no need for a sit down read through as it's just so simple. Overall, this shouldn't have been produced, and to no surprise it is by the same writer-director team who did A Quiet Place.
You know, the movie where nobody is allowed to talk. I see a common theme. This was personally my most anticipated first release of the year being a sucker for sci-fi and anything creature related so I gladly went to the early screening. It feels like it's gotten barely any marketing and most likely won't be in theaters long, but it has a chance to become an interesting entry in the genre. This is mainly thanks to writers, directors, Beck and Woods who know how to craft an intense creature feature, a quiet place one half. The story borrows a bit from the mentioned properties, but manages to still maintain an independent feel. It's still written well and has ambitious visions put forth. The scenery and visuals are epic in every sense of the word. Adam Driver showcases that he can be the main man in a large-scale action film which is very unexpected but welcomed. The creature design to me is the standout and what I show up for. It blows the last JW trilogy out of the water in that facet as well as the incredible action. Overall this is my kind of release and while it may not do massive numbers I'm glad crazy sci-fi is still being made for the big screen. I honestly didn't come into this one with very big expectations. Unfortunately, it didn't even reach that low bar. The premise seemed okay, although the marketing implied that this was a human, they even refer to him as an astronaut meaning there would be a time travel element, but no, he's just an alien from 65 million years ago, albeit one who is as absolutely human as lazy writing would make him. Adam Driver plays Mills, this is an alien name. Who is the pilot taking an exploration team to? Ah, who really cares? They're all in suspended animation for the two-year journey, although they must have been taking the scenic route, since a rescue ship is able to reach the planet in just a few days. Only Mills and an eight-year-old girl, why does an exploration team have an eight-year-old along? Manage to survive the crash on prehistoric Earth after the ship is hit by an asteroid, note to writer. They're not, meteors, until they hit the atmosphere, and spend the rest of the film walking through a not very cretaceous looking forest dodging dinosaurs. Although this situation should lead to at least a modicum of suspense, every encounter is so telegraphed by the direction that you see it coming a mile away. Of course, 65 million years ago is a very rounded off time frame, but gee whiz, wouldn't you know it. An extinction-level asteroid just happens to be only hours away from hitting the Yucatan and wiping out the dinosaurs, and any aliens who have crashed there in the past day or two. Great timing. Why couldn't we have crashed last week? I'll give credit to the CGI genies, who did a reasonably good job with the dinosaurs and the meteor effects, though both were a bit underutilized and often done in dark areas, or even off-camera with only holographic puppets filling in, so they wouldn't have to be perfect. In the same vein, congrats also to whoever decided that the alien little girl wouldn't be able to speak English like the alien Mills. As with the dark CGI, a kid can't deliver her lines poorly if she doesn't really have any. This one really should have gone straight to DVD, not even. I wondered why it wasn't being shown in the IMAX at my local theater. Now I know. If you ever want to see this on a screen bigger than your TV, I'd suggest you hurry. The answer is, pretty bloody awful. We've watched this on the day Leeds United got beaten 5-1 to one at home by fellow no-hopers Crystal Palace and I'd rather watch a repeat of that than a replay of, 65 feet. Dull, cliche-ridden flat storytelling. Zero less than one-dimensional characters and development. Tediously slow set pieces with trite dinosaur protagonists. God, such dull scenes, one after the other of averagely generated CGI monsters. And, the pseudo-daughter can't communicate meaningfully with the main character. You have to extract a very, very good performance to make that scenario work. Adam Driver is very bland in this too. Easily had more potential than what was served up. I was really looking forward to this when I saw the trailer but this had next to zero marketing. Not one thing that did attract me was Sam Raimi was producing so instantly it got my attention. The CGI is so mixed one minute at the beginning it's like watching the BBC Walking with Dinosaurs program that was released around 20 years ago but the CGI middle to end is good. It's like they kept the budget for the big finale but there aren't a lot of dinosaurs in this, so if you're going with the expectations of seeing a lot of dinosaurs you won't get it. There's a period in the middle of the film where it just sort of trudges on with not much happening. I personally would watch it again but I won't be in a rush and I'm highly disappointed they didn't do better in every department, story, action and CGI.
I'm a complete sucker for dinosaur movies. One of my favorites is, Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, 1953. A dinosaur is released from the ice at the polar cap due to nuclear testing and ends up killed inside the cyclone, the roller coaster at Coney Island. Probably cost two cents to make. It's way better than 65, a turkey. With a 45 million budget. It was annoying right from the start. His GPS gadget tells him that the reflection he sees in the distance is 15 kilometers away. Seriously. This guy is from another planet. Or kilometers universal. And listen. If you land on a strange foreign planet in the dark of night, would you really go out looking around? Personally, I'd wait to see if the sun was going to come up. Naturally he finds a young girl, who speaks a language he doesn't understand. He speaks English. See what I mean. Anyway, he seems to be in possession of every tool, and Gizmo needs to fight off every nasty animal he runs across. By the way, 65 refers to millions of years ago, the last year of the dinos before the asteroid crashed into Earth and killed them off. I was even able to figure out how the emergency vehicle would get turned over so they could fly away. It's just stupid. Adam Driver isn't bad, though. Really, save your money. Go see Scream 6. It's way better. 65 Feet is a dinosaur film with a twist. It's just a shame the twist doesn't really add much to the overall film. Mills' Driver is essentially the only actor, with his daughter Naveen Coleman and wife King appearing at the start, and Naveen in a few holograms, flashbacks, but then the only other actor being Koa Greenblatt who becomes almost a surrogate daughter when they're stranded. 